two trends are emerging in the economy and yeah, you might say they're, they're not good, okay? They are linked and that is debt and inflation. What's the relationship? I'll tell you coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. So lots of trends. I mean, you can't, you can't print, what is it now? $5 trillion of stimulus with another $3 trillion more being proposed. The Fed balance sheet has ballooned, what, $4 or $5 trillion on top of all this deficit spending and everything. You can't print all this money. That's just in the U.S. You've got, uh, obviously, all sorts of extra money being printed all across the globe by other central banks. You can't have this unprecedented money printing without some weird things happening in the economy. I mean, it's just not behaving like, like normal. And so lots of implications, lots of trends, but there's, there's, there's two trends that are linked and, and you've got to make a decision on what you're going to do with these, okay? And that is record debt levels and inflation. Okay, let's, let's break down debt, all right? So if you think of who can have debt, number one, I already mentioned, you know, Congress and, and the government printing all this money and, or, or, or running these huge deficits, blah, blah, blah. We have a record level of deficit. I mean, it's not even close here um, this, this past year. So yeah, overall government debt, skyrocketed. We, we are at, I mean, far in a way, record levels of government debt. All right, what about individuals? What about households, okay? Yeah, unfortunately that too, record levels of household debt. The average citizen or combined as citizens, record level of debt. And actually this data is a couple, a couple months old. I'm sure as housing prices have gotten more expensive, as people have refinanced and cashed out, uh, uh, cashed out refi, taking equity out of their houses, buying new vehicles that are costing more. Um, I, my guess is we're only, we're going to see this debt level, this, this total household, total uh, debt level for citizens skyrocket. Actually, this trend is likely to continue for at least the next few months. I have no idea the future. So total citizen household debt, that's record levels. What about corporate debt? Unfortunately, same thing. So you got the government record level of debt, individuals record level of debt, businesses record level of debt. And, and believe it or not, businesses are actually just using strategy. Wait a second. So I can leverage here and I can, I can borrow money at today's low rates and I can invest it in my business where I'm hopefully having a bigger profit margin or higher rate of return leverage, or I can borrow money and I can make an acquisition, um, which would have a better return than this interest rate, or I could borrow money and get this, buy back my own shares, which they said, you know, people were doing, or businesses were doing in waves before the pandemic. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit, income stopped, and businesses were saying, we're out of money. We got nothing. Well, what, what about all the money that you use to buy your shares back? It's already happening again. It's already happening again at, at crazy record levels, okay? So, um, so corporate debt at record highs. So debt levels skyrocketed, all right? And that's, you'd expect that, low interest rates. And you could even expect that because pandemic and getting through this time, eh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know, but record high debt. Now we're at surging inflation, okay? And don't get me started on the CP lie. Uh, if you look at the price of lumber, price of copper, these, these, uh, these commodities or these inputs, skyrocketing, okay? And now, even despite the, the, the manipulation of inflation data, if you look at expectations of inflation, we're, we're at the highest level of expected upcoming inflation than we've seen in more than a decade. And, and it's very possible we're gonna see levels, expected inflation levels that will be the highest since the 80s when we had hyperinflation. So you've got really, really high debt, record high debt, and surging and higher inflation expectations. These are linked. How do you want to link them? Well, number one, you could look and say, if, if, if just based on the math, if all else is equal, I should borrow more money. I should have debt. I'm incentivized to have debt today if we're going to see inflation in the future. Why? Because inflation simply means a dollar today 
is, is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. Basically, there will be more dollars out there tomorrow, so today's dollars are worth more. So let me say it differently, okay? Um, if I go out and borrow $500,000, a half million dollars today, all right, and we see inflation in the future, there'll be a ton of money. $500,000 won't feel like as much debt in the future because there'll be more inflation. There'll be more dollars going around. Therefore, I can inflate my way to a healthy amount of debt. I, that, that's, that's a good trade. Some would argue that's what the US government's doing. Right now, they're intentionally trying to inflate so that the overall debt level that we've got is more manageable. I don't know. I, I don't know if they're that smart. I think there's a lot more going on than just that. But, but if we're going to see inflation and more inflation, I mean, mathematically, that means you should take out debt today, all right? But that's not the only relationship with inflation and debt. Debt, as you know, has another relationship with risk and, and having more debt increases your risk. Now, again, in a perfect world, having debt today and seeing inflation, you'll have more dollars, you'll, it'll be easy access to dollars to easily pay that debt off, okay, no problem. But you gotta have access to those dollars, okay? And that's where risk bears its ugly head with debt. With debt, you have gotta pay that money back. And yeah, you can pay it back with cheaper dollars, that's, that's what I'm talking about, that relationship, but you've gotta pay it back on time. Therefore, you gotta make a payment every month, every month, every month, every month, every month. And what happens if you have an interruption to your income, like we suddenly saw in the pandemic, or like people suddenly saw during the great financial crisis or the tech bubble. What if you have an interruption to your income and now you're pinched and you're unable to make those debt payments? What happens there is you took advantage of the relationship between debt and inflation, said, I'm loading up on debt, and didn't recognize the relationship that you were making with debt and risk, and all of a sudden, you're cashed out. All of a sudden, you you went below, as as um, Jim Collins says about managing great businesses. You went, you made a decision that was below the death line, right? All of a sudden, something happens. There was a change that, yeah, was possible but not probable, and it did happen. And bam, you've got to go bankrupt. You, you can't afford this debt. So you went from leverage for inflation to creating risk in your overall financial life uh, below the waterline, below the death line, which means, okay, something happens and I'm not as nimble and, and a financial surprise occurs and I'm done. Financially, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I've got to restart. I've got to start over. So how do you apply this? Guys, there is a mathematical connection between debt and inflation. And, and I, I do, I, I, think, I think a technology in and of itself is deflationary. I think it is, and I, I know it is, okay? And there's a technological force at work right now that is driving deflation. And yet, with the amount of money printing and the amount of supply chain issues and other things, this perfect storm that's happened, I mean, the only way to say we're not gonna see inflation, at least here temporarily or in the short term, um, is to have the data be manipulated. There's no question, things cost more. Just look at the house, okay? Just look at stocks, just look at lumber, just look at copper. Stuff costs more, okay? So if you wanna play that game and borrow, today's, borrow at today's rates, borrow money, and use cheaper dollars in the future to pay that off, that works. But guys, you've gotta do so in a structurally responsible way so, at, so that if, as you're managing risk, as, as certain things happen that are outside of your control, either a, a crash or a industry disruption or a sudden job loss or a job change or something, or a disability, health emergency, something like that, all of a sudden your income is changed. Can you still make that debt payment that you've signed up for? That, that goes from having leverage become bondage. And if it's not about just trying to get rich quick, if it's about making progress in your overall financial life, taking steady steps towards achieving your financial goals, do you need to take that level of risk? How close do you need to go between leverage and bondage before you'd say, yeah, that's just not responsible for my overall financial situation. You've gotta look at all six areas of your financial life and see, well, what makes sense? What would wisdom do? That's the role of your certified financial planner. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one on my team. You can find us online, corehorn.com. 
That's Corhorn with a K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well or send us an email, info at corhorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.